What do you do when the narcissist is running around town telling all manner of lies and levying false claims and accusations against you? How do you handle that? Well, today I'm unpacking six powerful ways to deal with a narcissist's false accusations. You don't want to miss this. Hey friends, Tammy M. Joyce here, empowerment life coach, creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And if you're back, of course, welcome back. Thanks for showing up and for tuning in. Either way, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. So how do you defend yourself against the narcissist's false accusations? Well, it depends on the circumstances. Like for example, if this is happening at work, you'll want to start by remaining super calm and be absolutely professional. Always sure to conduct yourself in a manner that is above reproach. And I'm not saying this is going to be easy to do, but that's your starting point. Now, depending on the situation, you may actually need to talk to a lawyer. At the very least, you'll want to speak with the head of your HR department to hopefully get some support, but also ensure that there's a record being kept of what's going on. Gather the details of the complaint or false accusation and gather any evidence you can. If you're able, find witnesses and then present evidence in the list of the witnesses' names. Be honest and cooperative with any investigations the company might hold and, in so much as you're able, steer clear of the person laying the false accusations against you. The less contact you have with this person, the better. Now, that's a short list of how to handle false accusations at work, but sometimes it's not so cut and dry and certainly a whole lot more painful when you're being targeted this way by a destructive narcissist in your personal life, like for example, by a member of your family. And if you're new to the world of narcissistic abuse, healing and recovery, you may be wondering, what the heck? Why is this even happening? Why are they doing this? And although there are many possibilities as to the motivation, as to why the narcissist is targeting you with these false claims and accusations, the truth is it often boils down to nothing more than scapegoating you in order to take the attention and heat off of themselves, lest others find out how dishonest, cruel, and downright abusive they have been. What you want to remember is in the narcissist's mind, as long as they're pointing the finger at you, the focus is off of them. And that's the goal. It's one way the narcissist deflects blame, shame, and avoids accountability and responsibility for the very real relationship crimes they've committed and the damage they've done. Another reason they might levy false claims and accusations is retaliation. Like for example, you've had the good sense to say no more to the toxic nonsense and insanity and have therefore decided to go no contact. So they'll smear you to anyone who will listen, saying whatever it takes, making all kinds of false claims and accusations for no other reason than you decided you weren't going to play anymore. When you leave, they have lost control of you and the dynamic. They know you're onto them and retaliation through smearing you with false claims and accusations is all they've got. Another reason they may levy false claims and accusations is they feel threatened by you. It could be as simple as the way you look, how you carry yourself, your sense of self-worth and self-confidence is very triggering for them, or they're triggered by the great life that you're living, how genuinely happy, kind, and loving you are. Whatever it is, something about the light in you disturbs and therefore threatens the insecurities in them. And they lash out with false claims and accusations. It can be mind boggling to be on the receiving end of this sort of thing, not least when it's coming from someone you've been nothing but good, decent, kind and loving towards. So what do you do? Well, here are six ways to deal with a narcissist's false accusations. First, tell yourself the truth. That's right. The very first thing you want to do when facing the narcissist's false claims and accusations is stay calm and tell yourself the dirt honest truth. Do not allow yourself to be gaslit. Don't allow the narcissist to manipulate you or your perception of reality. Tell yourself the truth about what you see, 
what you feel and what you hear, what you know for sure, what actually happened, and what is actually going on. Journal your experience out if you need to, but whatever you do, stay clear in your own perception. You know what you live, let that be enough. Which leads me to my next point. Number two, don't forget who the narcissist is. Remember who you're dealing with. What has your experience with this person been like to this point? Are they toxic? Abusive? Are they a bully? Even if covertly? Do they constantly gossip about whoever happens to not be in the room at the time, ripping people to shreds for no other reason than this is who they are? Do they have a tendency to lie, whether that be outright or lying by omission, twisting and distorting facts and the truth to suit themselves? Are they sneaky, manipulative, or do they get mad and lash out when it's clear they're not the one in control? More important than anything though, do they happen to be any or all of the things that they are accusing you of doing or being? Projection is a very real thing when we're dealing with people who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, friends. So do not forget who the narcissist is. Consider the source always. Number three, go deep. Now, deep is an acronym, meaning do not defend, engage, explain or personalize, no matter what the narcissist is saying. Remain absolutely detached and neutral. Again, I understand this is a whole lot easier said than done, but that's truly what you need to do. And what may help you with this deep strategy, no defending, engaging, explaining, or personalizing, is this little trick. Something that will help you to maintain your composure. Picture the narcissist the one in question that you're dealing with on a psych ward, in a hospital gown, with their little tushy sticking out of the back end. For real. More often than not, that is not far off in terms of what you're actually dealing with. You're dealing with someone who is quite unwell, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. So picturing them in a hospital gown can help you gain some perspective on the situation and help you maintain your composure when the heat is on. The more detached and non-reactive you remain, the more unhinged the narcissist is likely to become, in particular when they aren't getting the desired emotional reaction from you. And from there, it doesn't take long for the holes in the narcissist narrative to start to show. Now, comment below and let me know whether or not you can relate to any of this. Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. There's also a free gift section in the description below this video as well, so be sure to avail yourself of that. Number four, document everything. And I do mean everything. Record phone calls, voice messages, keep a record of emails, screenshot text messages, and keep a file of all of it in a safe place. You may never need it, but if the day comes that you do, you'll sure be glad that you have it. So document everything. Number five, establish and maintain no contact, if you can do it. And if you can't, in the meantime, learn how to use the gray rock method and learn how to set healthy limits and boundaries for yourself. And then back yourself. Hold the standard in your life. When we were kids, we didn't have a choice, but we're adults now, we get to choose. And I get it, they don't teach us this skill at school and very few of us grew up in families where healthy limits and boundaries were not only modeled, but also respected. In fact, if you're tuning into this channel, quite the opposite is likely what's true for you. So if setting healthy limits and boundaries is new behavior for you, know that this is a vital life skill that you can develop. And the Freedom Class can help you with this if you're serious about taking care of yourself in the face of the narcissistic perpetrator who is targeting you. Now, part of setting healthy limits and boundaries and maintaining them is being smart. Meaning, for example, never allow yourself to be caught alone with the narcissist. If you're in public, don't even go into the restroom alone, lest they follow you in there. 
Expect the worst when dealing with people of this nature and do what you need to do to take good care of yourself in the process. Now, with all of that said, last but not least, number six, ignore the nonsense and focus all of your time, energy, and intention on living your best life, preferably without the narcissist. That's right. Remember, weak people seek revenge. Strong people forgive. Intelligent people ignore. Ignoring the narcissist and their BS is always going to be a power move. Again, I'm not saying this is easy, but believe me, the absolute best thing you can do is to ignore them and whatever narrative they happen to be running with. Focus on yourself, your healing, your recovery, and figuring out how to start living your best life as your best self. Do your work so you can heal from the pain, drama, and trauma of it all in a real and lasting way. And like I said, get busy creating your best life. You deserve at least that and so much more. It's time now. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. But before I go, how can Tammy M Coaching help you? Well, four ways. Number one, subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to make sure you get my new video every Friday. Number two, watch my free web class by clicking on the link in the description below. You'll learn about my personal journey and professional experience through decades of research specific to healing and recovery from codependency and narcissistic abuse. You'll also learn about some powerful strategies that you can begin to use today. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, and you'd like to be supported by a stellar community of like-minded people who are focused on solutions that actually work, you can learn more about my eight-week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class, by going to www.tammymcoaching.com and clicking on programs and reviews for all the details. And number four, if you want some help right now because you have a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to break free from painful relationship patterns permanently and actually make lasting progress in your healing and recovery, go to TammyMCoaching.com and click on apply now to learn how you can become my client.